Hey, and welcome to another tutorial. This time I'm going to show you my process on how to quickly bring a character from ZBrush to Marmoset Toolbag to create some really cool renders using my new render scene. So here's the basic workflow. I'll first decimate the character in ZBrush and unwrap the UVs, send it to Maya to assign materials and lay out the UVs properly, baking and texturing in Substance Painter, and then bring everything into Marmoset to render. I know this sounds like a lot, but it's actually quite simple and effective once you've got the assets and the templates in place. So let's kick things off in ZBrush. When I have a finished character, I do a decimation to reduce the poly count as much as possible while keeping the key details. In this example, I'm just using the head to keep it quick, and my goal here is to stay under 1 million polygons, since Maya doesn't handle dense meshes as well as ZBrush. If your model is already painted in ZBrush with polypaint, and you don't plan to repaint it in substance, make sure you turn on the Use Polypaint option before decimating. If you want to use the high to low poly method of baking maps, this is a good opportunity to export the high poly meshes before decimating them. Head over to Z Plugin, Decimation Master, and start decimating. I like doing this piece by piece to keep control, but you can also use the pre process all and decimate all if you want to do it all at once. Once that's done, it's time to unwrap UVs. Go to Z plugin, UV master, and unwrap all the subtools. After that, I will export the mesh as FBX and we are moving to Maya. Inside Maya, I usually assign different materials to different groups of objects like head, clothes, accessories, but since we are just using a head here, I'll keep it simple and apply one material to everything. Next, I still need to lay out the UVs properly. In the UV editor, select all the UVs and click down here on Layout. I'm just quickly tweaking the UVs here just so I can use some more of that space. Then I export this updated mesh and head into Substance Painter. In Substance Painter, choose the default PBR metallic roughness template, import the FBX, and until very recently, I used to unwrap UVs here in Substance, and if you want to do that instead of unwrapping them in ZBrush, just make sure you click on the Auto Unwrap checkbox. With the mesh imported to Substance, press F8 to switch into Bake Mode. So here's what I normally do. I bake the default maps, I set the resolution uh, around 2K or 4K, in this case I'll go with 2K, and since I don't have a high poly version, I check the box to use the low poly as a high poly. For the anti-aliasing, I go with 64, but for this example, I'll keep it a little bit lower. Let's go with 16. I also bump up the ambient occlusion quality by increasing the secondary rays, and do the same for curvature. Let's do 128 on each. Once you're ready, hit Bake. And after baking, press F9 to go back to Painting Mode. 
Before diving into painting, I always tweak a few display settings. I use the Studio Tomoko environment map. I switch the environment alignment to camera, so the environment rotates with the camera. In shader settings, I increase the specular quality to 128 or higher. And this is important because if you keep it very low, the roughness values might look totally different once you move to Marmoset. I also lower the AO intensity because my materials already use AO maps for the albedo or the color maps. And I don't want that to double up and make areas look too dark. Now for the fun part, I apply my custom PVC material, which is really super basic, and I'm going to use this material for the entire model. I'll just have to change the color and the roughness values for each object, so they don't look exactly the same. But here's a breakdown of how I built this material. So there's a base layer with color that you can easily change, and the roughness value is around uh, 0.5. There's also a gradient layer to darken the bottom. You can also play with the color, opacity and blending modes. An ambient occlusion control layer. And be careful not to overdo it, because this can make the model quite dark in some areas. A curvature color layer to make the edges brighter. And finally, a breakdown layer using grunge maps to add roughness variation with a levels filter to quickly change the contrast. Let me show you how to quickly build a basic roughness map with some variation. I add a new layer, activate just the roughness channel Add a black mask, then a fill layer inside that mask. Type grunge map on the search box, and there's quite a lot of grunge maps here, so just choose one. And you can change the view mode to roughness, so you can see what the roughness channel looks like. And the tweak the tiling, rotation. You can keep adding more fill layers with different grunge maps and play with the blending modes as well.
I'm just going to speed things up here, but make sure you learn the foundations of Substance. It's really an unbelievable software and I recommend you to check out their official YouTube channel. They have some really cool tutorials in there and I'll have a link in the description to one of their tutorials. Now that I'm done with texturing, I export the mesh with UVs and the textures. Set the destination folder, choose the PBR metallic roughness output template, and that's it. With this template, Substance is going to export multiple maps like roughness, albedo, metalness, normal, height, and curvature. But for the sake of this tutorial, I'm just going to use the roughness and the albedo maps. Now let's jump into Marmoset Toolback. I start with my render scene, where I have this model just for reference. Import your character, scale it so it's about the same size as the reference, and after that you can just delete the reference model. Move your character into the turntable group that's already set up for rendering. If you play with the timeline, you can see that the turntable is rotating. And if you want to turn it off, you can just uncheck this box. You can also play with the speed if you want, or in some cases, I'll put the key and the fill light inside the turntable so that the lights rotate around the model. Now for materials, right click on an existing material, like the basic material that I'm doing here, choose Copy Material Settings, then go to your model's material and click Paste Material Settings. Load your exported roughness and color maps into their respective slots and it's pretty much ready. From here it's all about tweaking the lighting. You can adjust the existing lights, change colors, brightness, or create new lights.
And when you're ready, click the render object and choose whether you want a single frame or a full turntable sequence. And that's it. That's the full process I used to quickly render my characters using this simple but powerful workflow. If you found this helpful, don't forget to like the video and subscribe for more tips like this. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.